morning. Good Monday morning. Um, I am House Minority Leader Lisa Damoth, and today we want to talk about energy and the environment. Uh, Republicans want energy that is clean and affordable. Republicans do not oppose making our energy cleaner or renewable. Democrats, though, seem to want energy that's clean no matter what the cost to Minnesota families, even if it results in higher electric bills. The bill that is going to be up on the House floor today um, will make life more expensive for Minnesotans, and it will drive up our energy bills with new mandates. This bill is actually out of control, and it encourages out-of-control government growth at a rate of 513% increase over base funding in the general fund on the energy portion alone, and an additional 2,000 286% increase for the Renewable Development Account. This would raise millions in fees for our treasured Minnesota activities such as fishing, boating, or even visiting our state parks. Democrats are raising billions in dollars in taxes in other parts of the budget and using it to fund these green energy provisions and mandates that would threaten the reliability of our energy threaten the reliability of our energy grid, and result in higher energy bills for Minnesotan families. While everyday Minnesotans will have to brace for higher energy bills and budget even more to enjoy these hobbies, wealthy Minnesotans would get the benefit from $2,500 rebate for purchasing an electric vehicle that, would, could, that they could easily afford. There is no income cap for that electrical vehicle incentive program, but low-income Minnesotans would only receive $500 more for that same purchase. Minnesotans aren't asking for millions in fee increases. Minnesotans aren't asking us to make their energy bills more expensive, especially when we have a $17.5 billion surplus. We are still waiting to see that tax relief. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Representative Chris Wazinski. Thank you. Uh, Chris Wazinski, uh, House District uh, 15A. You know, Minnesotans will pay more. Uh, the, these bills that are coming before us, this is really kind of the, the opening uh, valley of, uh, of, of legislative action taken by the DFL majority. And time and time again, what we're seeing, uh, that the priority is government first. Uh, when you have an opportunity to lower electric bills, to make living in Minnesota more ex uh, more affordable, uh, the Democrat majority is deciding to how do we increase electric bills? How do we make it more expensive and more uh, put more red tape in the process of building jobs, building an economy, raising a family? Um, we have many amendments that will be. Uh, putting before the legislature that we will be fundamental in improving this bill. One of the most important uh, amendments that will be on the energy portion of the bill is the A31. And we would encourage uh, folks from the, the public to contact uh, their legislators to vote for that. And that would fu fundamentally change the direction of the bill rather than grow government, rather than grow opportunities uh, for government programs to increase. It would fundamentally change the cost perspective of electricity in Minnesota. It would return uh, over millions upon tens of millions of dollars back to ratepayers, back to business owners, back to single families uh, to fundamentally be able to afford the Biden economy that we have before us. And, and I would encourage uh, folks from the, the public to contact their legislators today and encourage them to put dollars back where they belong, back in ratepayers' hands, so that they can fundamentally afford the life that uh, Minnesotans all enjoy. Right. Next, we have Josh Heinzman, who will be speaking a bit, and then we can take some questions about the environmental portion of the bill. Yeah, thank you. It, my name is Josh Heinzman, GOP lead for the Environment Natural Resources subject area. And I uh, just want to quickly uh, just give you an idea of what we're looking at in, in the environment side of this bill that's going to be on the floor today. Uh, kind of a theme, as uh, Chris was saying, and Leader Damoth, increase fees, increase costs. And not just small increases, uh, in a number of categories, I mean, we'll just walk through, I have a few notes that I jotted down uh, for watercraft, for example. If you have a boat that's, say, 19 feet or less, you're looking at almost a 65% increase in your fee. If you have a watercraft that's 
19 feet up to 26 feet, well over a 100% fee increases. Hunting license increases, uh, fishing license increases, even fee increases uh, in cases where, say, uh, grandparents are wanting to buy a lifetime license for an infant, increases for kids to have an opportunity to access the outdoors. And this impact is cumulative. At a time when Minnesotans have, according to MMB, 11% uh, less disposable income and a $17.5 billion surplus, Democrats are raising fees massively in all these categories, making the outdoors less accessible and providing fewer opportunities for those that may be limited in terms of their income and their ability to access the outdoors. It's just the wrong approach. And so uh, the message is, is that you know, we need to see a change uh, in some of these priorities, and we have to speak to it. And we'll be doing that today on the House floor, making sure that Minnesotans know what's being proposed in some of these bills, the energy bill or the environment bill. Uh, and, and hopefully we can see a better outcome as we come into conference committee and going forward. Any questions? Um, can you talk about the mandates on the energy side, and I guess maybe in the environment side too? From what I remember, there's cumulative impacts maybe, and the storage, but things have been shifting, so maybe I missed something, or maybe those are in or out, I can't remember. Talk yeah, so there's, you know, two, two of the major ones. Uh, the city of St. Uh, Paul has a ben benchmarking, and, you know, taking a bad idea that's been in one locale and moving it statewide does not improve a bad idea. Uh, so what that's going to do is, is force uh, businesses across the state, uh, from a warehouse to a large manufacturing plant, to track their energy uses, uh, send it to the state of Minnesota, and then also uh, allow that to be public information. And you know, from just a, a, a private standpoint, from a, an ability to compete in the market, um, you know, those are all big issues. And those are just general mandates on business. So while rents are going up, while their electricity is going up, now we're gonna put a mandate that, that businesses are gonna have to have an employee that tracks their energy use, answers it a program, and then we also have to grow government as well just to track that information. Just the city of St. Paul themselves with just 600 uh, businesses that they track have to have a full-time employee plus uh, to track that just for one uh, municipality. And we're going to move that as, as a statewide process. Um, folks are going to be really concerned. And then some of the other uh, potential mandates are, you know, the energy storage. So what, what the, the DFL majority is doing is saying taking unproven technology, mandating it on uh, rate payers so that they have to install uh, this. Uh, so the primary reason is they're, they're asking for 3,000 megawatts uh, when uh, large industrial solar gets in place by XL Energy or other uh, rate, or other investor owned utilities. And that's going to raise the fundamental cost of even just putting something that's supposedly so cheap in. And that's one of the real questions that we ask is we hear time and time again that wind and solar are the, mo the cheapest forms of energy. And you know, if that's the case, if that's for real, then the market would respond. Right? We don't have to mandate it. We don't have to tell uh, ratepayers and taxpayers that you need to, one, be taxed to pay for it, and then, two, be able to have pay higher energy rates uh, to make sure that those businesses are profitable. And that's really an unfortunate turn that we're seeing is that time and time again, when, when we have an opportunity to shrink government or lessen the costs on Minnesotans, we're taking the exact opposite. We're saying, how do we increase government? And how do we make electricity more expensive by mandating battery storage for solar installations on unproven technology? And, and really, uh, that's that's one of the other cliffs. If you just a word picture we like to use is is you know wily e. coyote chasing the uh, the the roadrunner, and oftentimes you know wily e. coyote is running over that cliff and running his legs and keep on moving. You know, technology in Minnesota and and. Democrat mandates on business are some of the same way. There's nothing to support it. Do you have a question? Did um, I answer your question all the way? Did you have a follow-up? You good? Go ahead. You've alluded to this a little bit. There are quite a few amendments posted mm -hmm. for this bill. I'm wondering if you can get into uh, some of the proposed changes, what you'd like to see um, if it's to move forward. Absolutely. You know, I think fundamentally, you know, one of the best uh, would be the 831 that we mentioned, which would really just return 
the dollars that are being spent uh, through the general fund dollars, but also the, the ratepayer dollars that are taxes that are collected through the utilities and put into a special slush fund that Democrats really enjoy spending, and returning that back to the ratepayers, because that's one of the things that I think every single person in this room on both sides of these aisles has been complaining about is the high cost of energy. And by returning those dollars back to ratepayers at the rates that they paid them, they will fundamentally be able to change their direction. That'll be one more person that they keep on staff. That'll be one, one way that they get to pay off their loan that they took out to buy a piece of equipment. Um, those are all things that are, are, are really, and, and just looking at uh, Minnesota as really an all of above approach when it comes to energy and energy production. Um, you know, we have some that are looking at just not, not just getting rid of the nuclear moratorium, but doing a study on it. Um, you know, there's been a lot of interest in, in looking at the new technologies that are being uh, developed across the country and really across the globe. You know, and we're seeing energy tightness uh, within U the European Union and the decisions that they've made when it comes to energy production, when it comes to renewable, their, at their attraction to it, um, that they've really decided that maybe relying on third world countries or, or areas that are in conflict are, are fundamental to uh, not a stable uh, environment. And some of the other ones are really where these processes come from. Uh, Representative Franzen and others have amendments that really speak to the, the real untold cost. And, you know, this, this green, the Minnesota Green New Deal really is, is not just fueled on solar panels, but where those solar panels are coming from. And really the, the, the real human cost of slavery um, we talk a lot about, you know, the, the, the problems that this state participated in and the country participated in when it comes to slavery, but really the Minnesota Green New Deal that we're seeing before us really perpetuates those problems by allowing slavery not in our black backyard, but in somebody else's. And we feel that's important that uh, we make a stand, not just something that's a political, but a really fundamental stand when it comes to the, the technologies that we utilize here in the United States and in particular in this Minnesota. Um, one of the other big problems that this bill has is really the expansion of the community solar program. Um, right now, community solar uh, produces about 3% of the, 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 the electricity for XL ratepayers, but from a fuel cost is almost 20% of the real cost. And this is 85 or 95% owned by Warren Buffett and his investors. And be, the reason why he invested, because it's so profitable. And the reason why it's so profitable is because of state mandates when it comes to how much rate payers need to pay uh, those particular developers. And we, Republicans would rather that program go away. Democrats, as we said earlier, instead of getting rid of a bad idea, they expand it. And they're going to expand it so it essentially goes statewide. And those costs will be not only bore here within the metro area, but across state. And that's not just business owners. That's not just the rich. It's single, single mothers. It's small businesses. It's folks trying to scratch by when their prices, price of energy has gone up tremendously and making it worse. The spending from the renewable development account, yeah. um, is it higher than normal or just because they're using money that wasn't spent last year? If I remember, there was no energy budget. Yep. Um, or is it even regarding sort of last year's untouched money higher than what you might normally see? Yes. Yeah, so, so on average, you know, the Renewal De Development Fund brings in about $37 million a year. And of that, there's probably been a, a warehouse of, of dollars, approximately $100 million. Um, all of that is being spent right down to the last dime. And some of those dollars are estimated dollars that may potentially come in depending on how much usage there are. Those are slowly accumulated because it's a tax on the cash storage, both at, in, in Red Wing and also in Monticello at those nuclear plants. And, you know, rather than, than being, you know, those are dollars that come out of ratepayers' pockets. It's not just magic money that shows up uh, and, and goes into an account. Those are dollars that ratepayers pay higher tax, higher, it's a tax on electricity. And so th that's part of it. But th the other problem is, is we also have uh, general fund dollars that are essentially mirror those. So in Excel or, or territory, you have this particular program, but they're taking a lot of the general fund money, which is everyone's tax dollars, not just ratepayers, and mirroring those programs across the state. And, you know, as, as we all found out, there's, there's a lot of tough things to get rid of, and a government program is particularly one of them once you start it. Um, Leader Damon, DFLers next hour are set to release their tax bill. I'm curious what you're looking for in that bill, um, what you would hope to see, and more realistically, what might be in there. We are looking forward to seeing that bill come out, but I think um, our, the House Republicans, along with every Minnesotan, 
is looking for tax relief. That is our expectation, is that we would be returning tax dollars that were from Minnesotans that were overtaxed, the surplus that we are still sitting at. We would fully expect that Social Security tax would be fully eliminated and other tax um, decreases rather than increases. We are hopeful for that, and we will see um, just after noon when that is actually released. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.